Log on to hrtv.com for more information. This is HRTV Rewind, taking a look back at the racing week. Last year, over 60,000 people went through the turnstiles here at Oakland Park. And this year, you can add HRTV to that list as we bring you live on-site coverage in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Back on February 24th, 1905, Oakland presented its very first race. Terry Walls, have you had time to reflect on the 20,000 plus consecutive race calls, Terry? Not, well, not really, I guess, because uh, I, I started right off on the in, on the next 20,000 immediately afterwards. <laughs> and if I live to be 102 or 103, I might be able to pull that off. I think you'll make it. I really do. You look great. <laughs> I'm but, feeling good. No, but you didn't have to stop. I mean, you decided to, to halt it on your own. You weren't sick or anything. Uh, what uh, made you want to uh, take a break? Actually, uh, it, it wasn't my call. It was a call of some others. They, they okay. felt like it would be better for me to spend some more time with the public here. And, okay. and I, uh, you know, I get along well. I've, I've been able to communicate well with the public here. So uh, it's fun for me, actually, to get down and, and mix with the uh, folks who have been my fans for all these years. The Apple Blossom Stakes has, in recent years, shined as the definitive early season race in determining the standout female in America. And here comes Zenyatta under a full head of steam on the extreme outside. Such was the case in 2008 when the mighty Zenyatta took her first major step towards national prominence, beating Ginger Punch, the defending Eclipse Award champion. Zenyatta was back in Hot Springs last year as dominant as ever, strutting her stuff in the 16th straight win of an illustrious career. It is Mike Smith. And Zenyatta in a triumphant return to Oakland. She wins the Apple Blossom Invitational by three and a half. So there are big shoes to be filled in the 2011 Apple Blossom, and most likely to fill them is Arbor de Grace, who won over this racetrack with Zenyatta-like dominance. It's Arbor de Grace leading the way, and Arbor de Grace is going to win the Aziri. Is this the best older filly in America? Find out more as HRTV proudly presents the 2011 Grade 1 Apple Blossom Handicap, live from Oakland. Half to Grace, coming off a decisive victory last time out in the Azera Stakes. Do you feel she's now getting the respect she deserves? Well, I think it took people by notice. You know, it was one of the deals that uh, they, they paid attention. Uh, a lot of people think that her numbers are so large off such a, a layoff that a uh, possibility she could bounce. But I think after the work the other morning, I think they, they feel like she may be moving forward. I know we feel like she's moving forward. Tell me about the work. It's like she really lit up the track. What happened that morning? Well, she really did. And we had horses sta stationed around the track to make targets to gallop by. But uh, thanks to my good friend, Mr. Lucas, uh, he broke one off about 10, 12 lengths in front of her. And, uh, and she started spotting him. So she went to running after him. And uh, so anyway, she got him run down. It was a little quicker than we had anticipated, but Wayne's trained a lot of great champion fillies, and maybe he was trying to give me a hand and, and help me out. So I'm, I'm going to take it as a good thing. In an ideal situation, where would you like to see her sitting in the race? Well, she seems to be changing, so we're, we're going to let her run her race. We'll, uh, you know, at, there was one time this year that she even refused to work by herself. You know, we had to keep giving her targets to run at. But that seems to be maybe in her past now. So she's a little more aggressive. So we're, we're going to let her go on out, and she'll just let her take it to him whenever she decides to. But, uh, but like I said, it's just, it, it'll be entirely a new process for us, I think. Ava de Grasse under the whip is third, another two lengths back. It's about five lengths further back to mismatch. Switch leads it, and now here comes Ava de Grasse, picking him up, laying him down on the outside. Ava de Grasse trying to run her way to a championship, and she's going to get it done in the Apple Blossom. Ava de Grasse, with the greatest win of her career, wins the Apple Blossom by three quarters over Switch. I was very confident knowing how good she is and knowing my connections. Uh, I ran the three apple. Um, I did get to the feeling that they were getting away from me. Uh, of course, at that point, I was still pretty handy. And, and at that point, I mean, you, you're always hoping that your horses respond the way you want them. And sure enough, uh, she was on the bridle for me in two jumps and uh, galloped out pretty strong. I mean, saying that she's a nice feel is really an understatement. 
There's the 16th to go. May Day Rose leading the way. The inside Dixie City. Down the middle comes Tappet Dancer and Hearts on Fire at the wire. It's going to be close. It's May Day Rose over Hearts on Fire. Dixie City was third and Tappet Dancer finished fourth. There's a 16th of a mile to go. And Uncle Brent has the lead length and a half. Albert Gaddy is coming after him. It's Uncle Brent, however, who has drawn clear. And Uncle Brent will win the Northern Spur by two. Albert Gaddy second. The last three Arkansas Derbies have had at least one California connection. This year, trainer Bob Baffert thinks the factor has a future so bright, obviously he's gonna wear shades. The graded earnings bank is almost closed. Sway Away, Elite Alex, and Arch 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 are just a few looking for a high placing on the wire that could transfer into a much needed deposit and a reserve spot in the Churchill starting game. Arch, 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 here comes the local guy on the outside. The leader is sway away. Here is Arch, 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 trying to win one for the locals and it is Arch, 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 heavy to hold off Nero at the wire. Arch, 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 the winner of the Arkansas Derby by a head. Nero was second. Well, I actually had a pretty good trip this time. He didn't get banged up. I was able to pick my spot and uh, basically ex ex execute the plan that we uh, initially st uh, strategized to pull off, and uh, we got there to the wire first. Well, I thought he had a perfect trip. I was glad to see somebody go, go out there with the speed, and that's what we were counting on. We were hoping that would happen. Is it safe to say you're going to rent a big bus and take the Fires Clan to Louisville the first Saturday in May? They don't have a bus that big. Wilkins and Wilcox in. Brilliant speed running late. Extreme outside with Newstead. Twin Spired to the lead. King Kanji running on. Brilliant speed far outside. Twin Spired. King Kanji. Brilliant speed running on. King Kanji. Brilliant speed. Twin Spired. Photo finish in the Toyota Bluegrass. And what a renewal it was for the 87th edition. One minute. When HRTV Rewind returns. You are not going to believe what you are about to witness in race number 10 at Gulfstream. Fly by Wildcat. If he wins, pays out the rainbow pick six to one ticket. $1.2 million that one ticket. Enjoy. You're watching HRTV Rewind. But it's still fly by Wildcat. Fly by Wildcat's got a seven length lead. Then Winery and Four Fires on the outside. Fly by Wildcat trying to hold on. Winery, Four Fires coming. These two coming after the front runner, and it's close. Maybe Fly by Wildcat. Four Fires right there, too. As was Winery, then Gabby's Wildcat and Greta Van Nistelrooy. You go from buying a house buying a car. I'm paying off the car. I'm giving Uncle Morty that money he needs. Electrolysis for Aunt Ginny. And no, no, go away, six to five favorite. Too late. Unbelievable. The one gets up over the 11 horse at six to five. They are posting it official. There is a live look. Fly by Wildcat. Whoever the individual or again, individuals that had that ticket. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. We have really generous, giving, kind owners. Um, Kaleem Shaw, the Zetchers, the Pegrams, Watson, Whiteman, it, practically everybody took part in it. And I was, I don't know, it's always a, a precarious situation when you ask people for money. For money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was really, um, really touched by what they did. They all stepped up in, in a big way and, and that just goes, to, that speaks to not only them, but to, to the industry as a whole, I think. There's just a, a lot of generous giving people. On the inside, Camp Victory. Behind that, Gallant Sun and Supreme Summit. They come for home and Regally Ready hanging on to the lead. Regally Ready getting weary late though. Comparis coming late to Lake Drum Supreme Summit on the outside and also Camp Victory. They hit the wire. Very close. Regally Ready, Camp Victory. And then a three way. Mike, any special, specific instructions to riding this horse today? Just stay out of his way, but basically uh, I've been chasing him enough and I finally got to get on his back. So it worked out great today. 
you got no breathers. You got pace pressure early on. You got tackled late. This horse really showed some heart today. He certainly ha he has in the past too. So I knew he'd be okay. You know, taking the pressure early and. Uh, it was just a matter of getting over the dirt in good order, and he did that, and it pretty much held off. Here comes Malibu Pier in the orange cap down the center, turning top, and Dina Cozy Rosie. They are homeward bound in the Santa Barbara Restless Soul, holding on to it. Malibu Pier, Cozy Rosie coming like a rocket on the outside. Malibu Pier, those kicked away. Malibu Pier going to win from Cozy Rosie, and Malibu Pier, perfectly ridden by Breeze Bunk. Malibu Pier has won the Santa Barbara. Cozy Carla just told me to take a long haul and, and try to get her to settle down and uh, see if I could uh, make a move on the outside or if I was on the lead to try to slow it down and, and just kind of kick on for home. And uh, kind of actually worked out really good when these two others kind of went on. She settled down really nice for me. And once I got the, uh, the outside, uh, it was, uh, she really accelerated and, uh, and drew away from everybody. Behind that, Falcon Rock. Heads a turn for home and Power Series holding on to the lead. Power Series is going. Quindici Man, the grey at the rail on the outside. Jennifer Pass coming with a big run. And here's Impenente Purse as well. Impenente Purse in there. Celtic New Year on the outside. Jennifer Pass, a thriller. They hit the wire. Jennifer Pass. Jennifer Pass, one of the next. Impenente Purse, a huge run second. Then Celtic New Year, Quindici. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Lurie, and when you think of racing in Southern California, San Anita Park always comes to mind. In our 76 year history, we've had some of the greatest horses, trainers, and riders come to this historic track. The 2010-2011 season was definitely no exception. It had everything, drama, excitement, disappointment, controversial decisions, and yes, the return of an old friend. Here are the top five moments of the 2010-2011 season at the Great Race Place. Now here's Malibu Pier running on in the orange cap. They come for home, switch as well, Pier. Malibu Pier running on late, but not to get to switch. An emphatic win from this quarter of quiet American switch, and Joel Rosario take the Labrea. Five lanes clear and getting stronger as he goes. An absolutely scintillating performance from Sydney's Candy. Never gave him a chance. Sydney's Candy and Joel Rosario romping home in the Sir Beaufort. They come for home, smiling tigers all hot. Twirling Candy catching. Twirling Candy, smiling tiger. Twirling Candy up to win the Malibu by another. Tackle by flight of a lifetime. McLean's music, flight of a lifetime. These two have kicked well clear back in third place as Meadow Road. Homeward bound, and now it's McLean's music finding more. McLean's music opening up through the lane. Four, five, going to be six by the time he hits the wire. Very, very impressive out debut here by McLean's music under Mike Smith, just cantering home. McLean's music scintillating. Mr. Commons, Midnight Interlude on the outside is coming on gamely. Here comes Midnight Interlude now. Midnight Interlude, all hands on deck for Comet to the top, trying to hold on. Midnight Interlude, Mr. Commons on the inside. Comet to the top is all hot. Midnight Interlude! Midnight Interlude! Got him a nose! Midnight Interlude has won the San Anita Derby to a very game. Comet to the top. Now Cham Pegasus gets out in the red cap and comes to take him on. So the two favourites come through the lane in the San Luis Obispo. Bourbon Bay on the inside. But Champ Pegasus has been very confidently ridden as right up alongside of him. It's a thriller through the lane. Champ Pegasus, Joel Rosario, Bourbon Bay and Rafael Bayerano. Nose and nose extremely close. Champ Pegasus maybe a millimetre. Bourbon Bay is right there. Candy set Suko's running a huge race on the outside. Heads a turn for home in the big one. Set Suko on the outside. Twirling Candy. Oh, a lot of bumping going on. Game on, dude. Shifted out. Game on, dude. Goes on. Set Suko. Quindici man. Twirling Candy can find no more. And it's Set Suko in full flight. Game on, dude. On the inside. Quindici man flying late. Set Suko. Game on, dude. So close. Maybe game on, dude. But it's so close. Bob Baffert's home base is at Santa Anita, but he didn't become Thoroughbred Racing's most well-known trainer by staying in the Golden State. If there is a big purse to be won, Baffert can't be far away. A lot of bumping going on, 
Game on, dude. Shift it out. Game on, dude was involved in a frightening bumping match in the upper stretch before coming back on to outduel Setsuko. Setsuko, game on, dude. So close. And thus tonight, he brings Santa Anita handicap winner Game on, dude to West Virginia for the one million dollar Charlestown Classic. Todd Pletcher is Baffert's cross-country rival, and he will be represented tonight by Rule, who looked like a Kentucky Derby contender when he won the Sam F. Davis last spring, only to be injured shortly thereafter. Rule rules in the Sam Davis. Can he live up to his potential in his four-year-old season? From New York comes a Cinderella horse for the classic. His name is Inherit the Gold, and he is easy to spot with his shimmering gray coat. He is also unbeatable this season, winning all five of his starts, including the Excelsior Handicap at Aqueduct just one week ago. But here is Inherit the Gold, and the beat goes on for him, and he wins with style. And from Florida comes Tackleberry, the leading money winner among older horses this year, with earnings of more than $750,000. He won his last three starts, including the Gulfstream Park Handicap, and should be on the lead again tonight. Here's the finish, Tackleberry again! With 59 wins among them tonight, Charlestown Classic shapes up as one of the most anticipated races of the year. You'll see it tonight, live on HRTV. Tell us uh, how exciting this is to have this kind of quality field showing up at Charlestown for the Classic and the uh, irony of having research on the also, researcher on the Alsos. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's going to be a blast tomorrow night. I mean, it's been a race that, that the folks around here have been talking about for a while. When you go into town, you'll hear, pe hear people talking about it. And, I mean, there's a, there's a, a big buzz locally for it. Um, as far as the, the two-time champ, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously on the also eligible list and uh, – you know, there was a little bit of an unusual path taken with the horse after last year's race, and he's been given some time off and unfortunately uh, wasn't able to draw into the field. Uh, and we, we don't expect uh, any defections to let him in either, uh, but we certainly appreciate what he's done for the race. I mean, he's a very popular horse around here. We know who's been a very popular horse this year, and that's Louis Oliveras' horse. The two Tackleberry has had a ton of speed, and what a record not only this year but last year. Uh, did you recruit him? Did he contact you? We reached out to him after the Gulfstream Park handicap, uh, and you know he looked like the kind of horse that you know he he's won at a mile and a seven furlongs and a mile in his last three starts. He kind of looks like he can handle anything thrown at him. Uh, he'd have been a horse that that would have fit this track and the configuration well. And, and we reached out to Mr. Oliveras, and he uh, he's been gracious enough to bring the horse. Well, and he has that uh, speed drawn inside like that, which could be a tactical advantage with the turn coming up so quickly. We want to touch on a couple others in the field, including the Santa Anita handicap winner, Game On Dude, Bob Baffert sending him to Charlestown, but changing riders, bringing in the king of the Pomona Bull Ring, David Flores. Sure, and, and David uh, David finished second in the race last year aboard Awesome Gem, who, who's also back in the field. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was almost, uh, I hate using the term surreal, but to see the, the Santa Anita Handicap winner unloaded in the Charlestown Barn area earlier this week, was uh, it was a thrill, and there was a lot of people crowded around it, as you could imagine. And here comes Little Shiny, set down for a stretch drive, but come here, Unga's giving him the slip, opens up by five in the final half for long. Come here, Unga gets the victory. Little Shiny's up for second. Back in third was Princess Poach. Off the turn and headed for home. It's Russell Road matching strides with Son of a bear. These two stride for stride. Russell Road on the outside, inching away to get the victory. Back in second will be Son of a Bear. In second, Jiu Jitsu Jackson. J.D. Acosta trying to run him down up the rail. That is Ryan's goal trying to make a move towards the lead. But it is immortalized. Travis Dunkelberger, four wins tonight. Jiu Jitsu Jacks run second. They hit the top of the stretch and Disky Dance and Kendrick Carmouche will try to take it the rest of the way. Along the inside still there is Gator's Choice trying to battle back. Here comes LaRonger Native and John Velasquez flying 
Dan on the outside. Disky Dance outside. Laron Jornada gets up. They get the victory. It's Disky Dance back in second. Off the turn and sweet goodbye. Trying to say goodbye to this field. Opens up by four. Back in second is CeCe's pal. But it's all sweet goodbye. We'll kiss this field goodbye to win the TVG Sugar Maple Stakes. In second, CC pal. All in line. And they're off and racing in the grade three, one million dollar Charlestown Classic. Game on due, another three lengths back to Tackleberry trying to hold on. And then down the center of the track, a late move coming from Tisway. They head for home, it's Duke of Mischief. Joe Bravo's got the lead, and the one million dollar purse goes to Duke of Mischief. Tight for a second between Game on Dude and Donald on the rail with that one was Tisway. I've learned that she's extremely talented and not difficult to train. Uh, this, uh, she's uh, the only real change has come the last race that she ran. I think she relaxed in that race by far uh, better than she ever relaxed before. That's why I'm feeling pretty good about the seven eights today. Well, how uh, relaxed do you think she could be today? Because she's coming off more than three months on the shelf. There's some speed potential on the inside, maybe the one from the rail, maybe the three with the layoff. Uh, how do you see yourself in that outside post with the three months off and your adaptability? Well, the nice part about the, ad, uh, about the outside post is the rider doesn't have to make a decision. You get, for a long time, you've got that long run down that down the backside and uh, the, the rider can just put his hands down and let her place herself. And, uh, you know, if she's a little bit on the aggressive side and wants to go after the lead, that's okay. But uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she's laying second or third to the one horse. They're off the turn and it is Nicole H. Handwritten here by Channing Hill into the final furlong, pulling away from the field. Nothing left for wild news down inside. Spacey Tracy sputtering. Kid Kate trying to pick up the pieces, but they're coming down to the finish. No doubt about this winner, Nicole H. at the top of her game. And she just waltzed through that final furlong to win it here. Wild News finishes second, Kid Kate was third. That's all for Rewind this week. Here's a look at what's coming up next week on HRTV. Counting down the reasons you'll want to watch Classic Countdown on April 23rd. It's the premiere of the newest episode, featuring the best grass horses in Santa Anita's historic turf marathon. John Henry wins the San Juan Capistrano. All ranked by host John White. It's the top 10 winners of a San Juan Capistrano since 1975. The beauty has butt up to win the San Juan. Premiere Saturday, April 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern. Good morning, Zoe. How are you? Good morning. You ready yeah. for an interview? We're ready. We're ready. What are if, we going to do first? If, if you'll get the shed rows raked up. We're still lacking a little over here, so we need a little help. Yeah. All right. Okay. See, this is what i got to do to get an interview with Larry Jones. <laughs> I think I'll... Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. There you welcome. go. Well, I guess we're ready. We can probably do it now. Okay. <laughs>